Hey friends, this is Coercion Current and what we have here are two different kinds of magnetic USB-C cables. So both of them actually have a magnetic connector then can, that can snap off and on. And we want to take a look at that today and also want to see uh, if magnetic connectors in general are good or not and if, if you should use them or just try, try to leave them out and what are the pros and cons of them are. So let's first take a look at what, what magnetic connectors are and sorry for the loud noise. Both of the cables um, came from uh, AliExpress and one of them actually came with the USB-A to USB-C connector which is quite nice but we don't actually need and if we take a look at them even though they, they look quite similar one of them says 60 watt and one of them says 100 watt so both of them most certainly are meant to be used for charging and not really transmitting data even though uh, practically all cables we've seen so far do feature at least the USB 2.0 data connectors. So let's first take a look at this one because this one is really interesting um, and as we can see the cable does not only feature a magnetic connector on the back that can spin around um, easily and freely but you can actually also bend the cable like that because it, ha it has a hinge that, that can hinge around and it's really interesting because I cannot see any connections going uh, from this to that part so they, they all need to go in, in some really interesting I don't know where way and probably uh, down the middle part here which was would also indicate that besides having the connections to, to your phone or whatever device you connected and the connection uh, between this and that half, you also have a connection between uh, the bending part and the, the fixed cable part. So you will add two connections to uh, your phone or device between your charger and your device that will produce a voltage drop and an additional resistance to uh, your line of charging and like I just said most both of them and mo most of the cables that come like this are meant to be used for charging and Interestingly enough uh, if we take a look at the connector The magnetic connector we can see that one one half of them is a ring and one half of them is just the connections and This makes the the spinny part spin easily, but what you can also see is the total amount of connections we have available so from the inner ring, we have one, two, three, four, five total connections. Let me recount them. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So this cable can actually not feature more, more than five different pins being connected uh, because this, this connector doesn't feature more than that. And we already know more about the cable without having to test it than with a regular cable, for example. This other cable uh, quite similar in its magnetic design. It just doesn't feature the ability to spin it around. So you can actually only connect it like this, or if we flip it 180 degrees like this. This is also one of the upsides of a USB-C connector um, because this is this due to its design because you can connect it like this or like this to your phone or laptop or whatever, and therefore it also doesn't matter if you connect it like this or like that to the magnetic connector itself. And what we can also see is this little point, and I'm quite sure that it's an LED, um, most certainly because I saw it in the ad online before buying it, so this should light up while being being connected to a power supply. So without, without any further ado, ado um, how my definitely not native speaking tongue would say it, Let's first try out the green cable because I'm quite curious uh, how it performs. And ah, you can actually see it lighting up here. And who, who that that's now interesting. The cable itself um, says that it's a 240 or uh, maximum of 250 watts charging power cable with a data speed of 20 gigabits per second. And the cable health is 100%. So either the cable is really good or it's just lying. And if we take a look at the specs, we can see, oh wow. It's a USB 1.1 or USB 2 cable and it says data speed of 20 gigabits 
that's not possible with USB 2 speeds. You need at least USB 3 speeds to be able to transmit 20 gigabits of data. Um, also with the voltages, uh, up to 48 volts and up to 5 amps. The voltage I can actually not test uh, the voltage rating itself without having um, the cable tested at the, the voltage, but the current rating of 5 amps is highly motivated and I doubt that it can handle 5 amps because if you take a look at this cable um, and connect it to a brand cable that can actually do 5 amps, you can see that even though this, this one has this fabric braiding or whatever on top, it is quite a lot thinner than this just PVC or whatever cable that is. So they do advertise themselves as being capable of handling 5 amps, but the cable with itself is, is not too good. So that's highly doubtful. And if you take a look at the USB pins connected, they have rebirth and ground D plus and D minus as well as shield which means that the cable itself says, hey, um, I do uh, have an e-marker inside, I have a passive cable, I do, don't have a vendor ID, so they actually didn't pay for a vendor ID, but just believe me, I can do 50 volts at five amps and I can do <laughs> USB 3.2 or USB 4 speeds at Gen 2. So the e-marker itself is definitely not the right e-marker for this cable. So the e-marker itself tells a lot about the cable, which is actually not true. This means that the, the devices connected to this cable would read this e-marker information and the e-marker would tell them, yeah, I can do 50 volts and I can do USB 4 speeds. And once they actually try to do that, they, they will fail, especially for the data, because the data pins uh, required for, for USB 3 or USB 4 are not even there. And that's what we found out earlier, because if you take a look at the, the amount of pins in here, there are not enough pins to, to support USB 4 speeds. And if you connect it back up and, and let it measure, it, it says the same thing. So someone did a, a really, really nasty thing and put in an e-marker in there, um, designed for a, a different kind of cable, designed for a much more expensive cable, for a much higher end cable, for a, a generally just more expensive and better cable and tried to skirt around that by, by just having it report fake information. And this means that, that, that even though this, this magnetic connector can, can be quite nice and it, you can use it for, for different kinds of applications, this cable just is a scam. The only thing that, that it, it was meant to be used as is most certainly to be used with your phone like this. So you connect to your phone and if you use it in bed or whatever um, and just accidentally rip it off, it won't break anything uh, on the connector side of your phone or the cable side. So that's what it was meant to be used um, according to, to the ad on the internet. The problem with connectors like this is that if, if you leave the rest of the connector um, open like this, then you have a direct connection between your phone case and the outside world. So I am wearing ESD safe gloves right now and I'm actually working on uh, an ESD workbench. So I'm grounded quite well and don't have any harmful uh, voltage built up on my body. But if I'm lying in bed and I'm isolated against everything, it can be that I'm charged at a couple thousand volts. And if I then connect the connector um, on the bottom side like this, it can very well happen that I actually break something inside the phone, especially the data connections um, that are now not shielded and not prepared or protected uh, against outside, but directly fed to this connector where I can touch it uh, with, with my high voltage built up on the body. So now that we know that this cable not only uh, reports wrong data, it also reports not the uh, what's written on the cable connector itself. Uh, it, even though it is a maximum of 60 watt cable, it says it's 100 watt and it reports itself as a 240 watts, 250 watts cable. So nothing about this cable is true and you should definitely not use it uh, in bed if, if you value your phone or whatever device you connect to it. So let's see if the second cable is any different. And this one is mm, violet or blue or whatever, and only says 60 watt on the connector. So 
maybe they're actually honest and truthful uh, about what they, they can do. And if we take a look at this magnetic side of the connector, at this magnetic connector, they have more pins available. So uh, they again have this flip around thing, so you can use it in, in, in both directions, but they, they may be able to fit more in than, than the first cable. So we don't actually know, and yeah, they also feature the same kind of light inside the connector. Um, the first one did, so that seems to be some kind of standard they agreed on. Um, even though not the official, oh no, the official USB standard. This cable is even worse. Let's connect it the other way around. Oh yes, this cable is even worse. So this cable <laughs> not only uh, features uh, this connector, but it's actually a short uh, inside. So you can then not actually use this cable um, uh, a whole lot. Even though theoretically um, we have some pins connected, it, it just reports as a shorter pin um, and some, some rebus resistance. So the other cable is a scan. This cable is just broken. Uh, both of them actually were, were bought directly from, from some, some online um, winding place where I normally buy my cables. But it seems like those two definitely don't make it into my bin of good cables and I will never use them again. I will just use them as reference cables for bad designs or um, thing, things you, you should not actually buy too cheap. With this, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and yeah, we'll try to see each other next week.